Okay, we're on Collins Jolly Road. Does that name sound familiar? Hopefully it does. Um, now, bear in mind, this, where a &E filmed the crime scene, where the crimes took place. Okay, so here's Collins Jolly Road. And here's uh, Sewell Road. Yeah, this is, uh, okay, so it should have been right in this area. Uh, but I think A&E might have, well, actually, this is, well, this looks like pretty new construction, so maybe they, it did happen in this area, but, um, I am looking, and I apologize for the sun, <laughs> it's, oh boy, <laughs> um, maybe it still happened in this area, I'm, 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 I'm looking for some power lines, that, that'll definitely, not these particular ones, but the bigger ones, I will say. Um, but that intersection, Collins Jolly Road and Seawell Road, that is where that, it, this, um, it happened. The murder of uh, Crystal Faye Todd. The brutal murder of Crystal Faye Todd. Yeah, this, this, a lot of this is brand new. These homes and everything. It's like, man, it's like, ugh. I was hoping the location wouldn't be so uh, changed, but A&E filmed their segment 17 years ago when the crime happened 30, 29 years ago, November 91. But maybe uh, that's Randall Road. Could maybe. But we are starting to get kind of rural area now. Um, so... But we'll just follow this road for a while and see where we end up. Uh, the area did have a lot of pine trees. <laughs> so, And I was uh, driving, not on this road yesterday, but 701, uh, which is like a mile or so to my the left of where we are right now. And that had the same style of power lines. So I'm hoping we're kind of in the area. Um, but it was definitely, I mean, I Googled this over and over again, Collins Jolly Road and Sewell Road, that particular area, and, um, you know. A little, I am a little disappointed that the, you know, the location didn't, because sometimes when you, when you see location that's on TV, it'll scream to you like Charlie Brown, that's it, you know? Um, okay, but here's actually the power lines. Are, do you look a little familiar, I will say. Um, it did happen in an area, a little community called Maple. Um, so. Yeah, power lines, yeah, those look similar, so... We're in the we're in the general vicinity. But I think the dirt road it took place on might have been paved. Firewood for sale. So this is the second episode of City Confidential um, that I've looked at. Uh, will there be a third third and probably a fourth yeah uh not any not anytime soon well maybe uh there's lynchburg virginia is about two hours north of where i live in greensboro so I might do that one uh, that episode is also in the 80 there's 82 episodes that are streaming right now on a and e crime central
Yeah, well, the City Confidential had about 135 episodes. Uh, so yeah, there's some missing. But I'm at least going to try to do as, as as many of the City Confidential episodes that are on that are available streaming wise um, on that uh, particular I have Lynchburg, Virginia Newberry, South Carolina um, and the uh, the Newberry I've actually already planned that out and everything because I, I was going to do it on, a, on another trip but it was a trip back to Florida, and uh, I decided to stay over this hotel in, uh, near nearby Columbia, but the day I woke up was going to go up to Newberry. I just felt so tired. I just wanted to sleep in and just be in the hotel the whole day. <laughs> hotel room the whole day. So. And maybe the um, the book I'm reading right now, maybe that'll have some co more context. Um, and if I need to, I can always come back to this area and, and film another follow-up segment on the City Confidential driving tour. Driving slash walking, because yeah, we uh, walked to some locations yesterday. And I tell you, Conway is really uh, holding its own. Um, for for downtown, it's 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 bustling. It is bustling with a capital B. Um, for with being you know, only 15, 20 minutes away from Myrtle Beach, that's kind of surprising. You know, being being so close to a. a a family vacation resort that gets 15 over 15 million visitors a year. That that's um, puzzling, surprising. What else was I going to talk about? Um, anything related to City Confidential on the show? Um, I will tell you. We're passing over the uh, the real Conway Bypass. SC Route 22. Now, the real bypass. Um, there were two narrators during the run of City Confidential. Um, one was Paul Winfield. He narrated the um, the show from its first episode in the fall of 1998 till his death, uh, I believe, it was sometime in the year 2003. In the last couple years, it was narrated by Keith Morrison, who and the um, the second narrator, Keith Morrison, uh, he's a little lot more common. Um, he's done a lot of army commercials, narrating. He think he's done some work for Dateline, NBC. They're narrating their crime uh, stories about other documentaries, that sort of thing. Um, I think he might even be an actor. Um, so he did the last two years. Um, and also the last two years of, of the show... Um, I noticed that the pace of the show was a little bit um, was a little bit faster, which I didn't really like. Uh, I like it to be more slow, more background music, more like the first um, 
the first few seasons of of, of of Unsolved Mysteries, you know, more more slower pace, more music, a little bit more reflection, a little bit more um, just looking around at places kind of thing, and a little bit less crime story and more of a travel log kind of thing. But I'm, 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 I mean, this, the show had 135 episodes, which I guess is, isn't bad, but I really feel, I mean, it could have had a, like, a, a over a thousand, I think. I mean, it could have had a much longer run. Um, and the reason why it got canceled, um, I don't know. I don't know this officially. This is just a logical thought of mine. A and E was going through a little bit of a rebranding right, right in the mid two thousands. Uh, because A and E started off as a arts entertainment, right? The art, the arts entertainment network, and it was more of a you know theater, opera, art. Uh, maybe some PBS Masterpiece Theater knockoffs, those kind of things, for about the first 10 years. And then by the mid-90s, we go into what I like to call the Golden Age of a &E, from about 94 to about 2007. This was this is where the, the, the it was it was more of A and E in name only and more of a uh, biography and a lot of crime. Um, what I mean by crime shows these these are more more cut cut edge original crime shows. You know, not not the same you know, procedural forensic files and all these other crime shows that are on Investigation Discovery um, nowadays. But by the mid '90s, by, by biography was on every night of the week, and also in '92, 1992, uh, you started to have a lot of uh, Bill. Bill Curtis was sort of the um, the spokesperson or the face of A and E, and Bill Curtis brought a lot of shows to the network: American Justice, Investigate Reports, Parole Board. And then you had Cold Case Files, which was a, a spin-off of Investigate Reports. Parole Board was also a spin-off of Investigate Reports. And then, of course, you had City Confidential in 1998. But there was so much, so many great, great programs from this, you know, mid-90s to about the mid-2000s. And then you started, you started to get into, well... The more of the the Hollywood reality, but and less of the true crime biography reality. You you got more into shows like Dog the Bounty Hunter, Gene Simmons Family Jewels. And, um, now there were a couple good shows I liked uh, in the late two thousands. At Parkin Wars, great great show. Uh, Confessions of a Matchmaker, which that only lasted like one season, like ten episodes. I'm like, come on, really? Um, and Big Spender, that was that was another uh, that was another great one too. Okay, so we are approaching a junction here with U.S. 701 and now I know where I am like I didn't know where I was before but now I now I know where I'm, now I'm, now I gotta take 701 south here goodness man these people are turning to all right so it's like you know man. anyway Um, 
now in A&E you have Intervention, which is okay show, not the best. Orders, okay show. Storage Wars, which is bleh, no point on. But right around 2015 or so was when I feel like A&E and the History Channel really kind of hit rock bottom. Not necessarily in programming, because pro the programming on Andy and History Channel started started going downhill um, the, about 10 years prior to that, mid-late 2000s. Um, I mean, History Channel went from, you could, you, you could watch History Channel any, any time, day or night, and there be, there will be historical documentaries, right? Um, but then starting in 2007, you got Ice Road Truckers, um, and, but then a couple years later, you got a couple good shows, Pawn Stars and American Pickers, but then you also had some shows that weren't really history, you had shows like, oh gosh, uh, H Aliens, oh boy, what a, what a, uh, Forged in Fire, what the heck, a, a blacksmithing competition show. You had a lone uh, which is a knockoff survivor, like really, but the biggest change in the whole A&E Networks corporate company. I'm talking all the networks that A&E owns, A &E, which includes A&E, History Channel, Lifetime, FYI. Boy, was that a terrible change for Biography Channel. Ugh. Um, all of those channels. Okay, the a &E networks, the biggest thing that they had that I liked about these channels, even after they started switching their programming around, was they, the, there was their uh, commercial breaks. How they did their commercial breaks. Okay, you have most channels Pretty much all the channels have, for a half hour show, you have three breaks. For an hour show, you have five breaks. A&E, History Channel, all the affiliated channels, they had, they only had, they had pretty much the same number of ads, or excuse me, the same number of minutes of ads, but they only had, for a, for a half hour show, two breaks. For an hour show, four breaks. So, you know, you had longer break, longer commercial breaks, but you also had longer segments. And it just felt a little, little bit more like a... Um, which, especially for History Channel, I think is a little bit more suitable for the documentary format. But about 2015, they said, we want to be like everybody else and just go to the, the three, the three, five format. Three, three breaks for half hour show, five breaks for an hour show. Man. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> um, but if you go back to about 2005, all the networks that Discovery Channel had, they used to have <coughs> two breaks, half hour, four breaks for an hour. Um, Up to about 2005. Also, all the channels that Viacom owns, like Nickelodeon and, and MTV, VH1, CMT, probably missing a few others, but yeah, same thing too. That was like the biggest thing about cable. A lot of the cable networks had different ad ad formats from the you know CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox channels. But also, the thing about AD History Channel is. Also, right around 2015, was uh, the commercials. The, the commercials per hour started going up pretty tremendously. Because if you go back to right around the nine, late 90s, early 2000s, most hour-long shows on a and &E and the History Channel were 44 to 46 minutes. Nowadays, on those channels, um, the break, the amount of commercials per hour 
are about 41 to 43 minutes. So you're talking a good three to five minutes worth of content cut. Pretty, pretty hard to believe. Anyway, I think I'm done talking. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the scenery on this little segment here. Um, and again, uh, I'm sure we'll do another one of these city confidential driving tours. Um, Hopefully, the important location won't be so different <laughs> from the TV show like it was this one. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.